Classical ballet classes are the same everywhere. The teacher demonstrates a move, the students repeat it. Tanya loves ballet. She wants to be a professional dancer one day. But are hours of repetition all it takes to make the perfect dancer? Is it just a question of natural physical talent? Bettina Blazing says no. She's convinced that to be a good dancer, you need to train your brains as well as your body. The researcher analyzes Tanya's movements at the biomechanics laboratory at the University of Bielefeld. Special cameras record exactly what's going on in her joints as she dances. This test is usually performed on professional athletes. For the ballerina, it's a completely new experience. Do a really low plie, so that you have to power up to get back out of it, and keep your shoulders over your hips. Bettina Blazing wants to know exactly where Tanya wobbles in a pirouette and how the mistakes she's making can be solved on a cognitive level. Frequently you learn a motion and then practice it until it's automatic. But if something is wrong, then you're practicing that mistake as well. Once that happens, it's very hard to get rid of the mistake again. In that kind of situation, it helps to work on things cognitively. You end a sort of mental switch, which allows you to fix the move by accessing the motion or the flawed part of it, and finally get rid of the mistake. The second step is identifying the error itself. Tanya is asked to analyze several images and decide which ones represent the moves that make up a proper pirouette. This process allows her teacher to determine whether Tanya's mental image of a pirouette is correct. She can also predict how the form will look on stage. What we're measuring here is the image of a pirouette that is found in Tanya's long-term memory. We can find out exactly what sequence of motion is stored in her long-term memory for this particular move. Those images are the basis for how she executes the pirouette. Habitual mistakes can be recognized immediately with the help of this computer analysis. Ballet master Martin Putka has already done some experimenting in this direction. He's had dancers lie down on the floor and go through their choreography in their heads. I've got some experience. I've done experiments with pupils and dancers where I let a dancer study a motion in their head that they've never executed successfully. And after about 20 minutes, they can stand up and try it, and it works for the first time. It seems like a miracle, but it isn't. Because the process of ideokinetic training shows you the way to get into your head. For the first time, Tanya is thinking about her movements differently, and the process worked. Now she feels confident about the sequence because she's gone through it all in her head beforehand. Mental training can be used to reduce the hours of monotonous practice required for ballet. And it should make learning to dance easier and faster. Oh, Shadi!